Wakey, wakey, Josh. <laughs> Time to build a van. No, you can't do it again. Hello, Millie Mae. <laughs> Morning guys, welcome to day two of our crafter conversion project. It's Saturday, it's the first full weekend with the van, so we're hoping to get quite a lot done. Um, I'll let Josh the itinerary master explain what's on today's agenda. So we need to head over to Van Pimps to pick up some remaining glass that we ordered. Because I forgot to order two bits of glass when I ordered it, so we're gonna go and uh, pick those up and then we need to go to Halford to get a trim tool kit because I don't know what's happened to the last one from the transport field. We threw them away. Threw it away? Yeah, I can oh. remember doing it. Right, okay. So then it's going to be, well it depends on the weather because the weather's not looking great this morning so maybe we're probably, or well, definitely going to be stripping the back. So we're moving all the wire panels from the walls and then assessing to see what the condition is around the trim clips and then depending on the weather we'll probably get the trims off and uh, start to seal those clips up if not we'll probably wait for a dry day for that so then we can do the um, what they call the drainage channels as well um, then there's also a little bit of rust on the front of the windscreen on the top at the back that we need to look at just to sort out and then, depending on the weather, we might have a go at fit some windscreens, possibly, maybe. Yeah, it's really annoying. In true British weather style, it's it's been chucking it down this morning and we were hoping we could maybe make a start on the, the windows or the, the roof fa fan, fan. Um, but it's just not the weather for that. So hopefully tomorrow will be a better day, but we shall wait and see. So I've just made a quick stop at Van Pimps to collect some of our remaining windows. Uh, so it's the first time we've used these guys last time we actually used a company called camper glass for the transporter windows but we couldn't use them this time because they didn't have any of the windows that we wanted in stock and these guys actually ended up being cheaper so it was a win-win all round so the plan is i think anyway i hope i've got this right josh will correct me if i'm wrong so we're gonna have big window here then another one here and then we're gonna have like a smaller one that's going to go at the top here that's the plan anyway we'll see if it all pans out oh and back, back ones as well we've got the two back ones going in here so hopefully it'll be nice and bright inside the van so we've not had the best start josh has just come back to the van with the glass um but van pimps when you collect for some reason they don't actually provide any packaging so it's just got a small bit of thin like that corrugated cardboard wrap around the glass but no, nothing else to protect it, no cardboard box or anything. Um, and they only provide that if you uh, have it delivered, which, which just seems really weird. So just be aware, um, if you order from Van Pimps and you collect, they don't actually provide a cardboard box. So um, yeah, I think had we known that, we would have just arranged for delivery. <laughs> So I've just been saying about how when you collect from here, you don't get given a box, which seems really weird. Have it delivered. Um, yeah, so Josh has been back in and <laughs> said to the guy that we didn't really think it was on, that it didn't come with a box, so they've given him one. <laughs> how many more have to come? This is it. That's it, okay. Well, let's get it loaded in the then. At home. Cool. It's heavy, it hurts. <laughs> Right, so we're back from picking up the glass. We've been to Halfords and picked up some rags ready for cleaning out. And job one is to strip everything out. So we're gonna be stripping out all of the wood on the sides. Um, probably, I don't know, if we're pulling up the floor. Let's have a look what's underneath, just to make sure there's nothing untoward lurking underneath. And then, yeah, give it a right good clean out. Oh yeah. So Josh, is currently working on taking the bulkhead out, which is a bit of a monotonous, a monotonous, monotonous task. It's in the arm. Because there's just like well, screws you, everywhere in you it. You don't have to take these screws out and just putting it down because it's easier to, to get rid of it in multiple pieces. Yeah. So, uh, so it can feel really, really open in here once we take this out. 
but the the echo is going to be unreal when we're talking in the cab. It's just the echo central. And we've got a serious amount of cleaning and painting today. Yeah, we've got quite a few tip runs to do, so we've we've stripped all this wall now uh, and this one. This this isn't attached anymore. We're just putting it there to store for the minute. Um, and then we have all of this wood down here. All got to go to the tip. So. It's not in too bad condition to be fair underneath all the plywood, but you can see that it needs a serious cleaning. So I think that's going to be the job after this. Once Josh gets the bulkhead out, we'll start cleaning down. He's only gone and done it. The bulkhead is out. In <laughs> less than an hour. Well done, Josh. So now we're completely open, but it's also exposed all the dirt that's on the floor down here. Which I'm not, I'm not really looking forward to cleaning it. If I'm honest, it's just such a a long task, isn't it? Yeah. Especially when it's a van this size. And then we just need to set that pan, them two panels off the back door, and Bob's your uncle. It's the first tip run. Yep, doing all right. Yeah. Not bad for day one progress. Not bad at all. <laughs> God, they're hard to get out of these fucking clips. I love when you find little extras in your van. <laughs> Before you start a van build, you should know what you're really signing yourself up for, and that is a life of living with boxes. <laughs> so we thought while we were doing a tip run, we might as well empty everything out that we'd ordered, and then we can get rid of these boxes as well, because honestly, it's doing my head in <laughs> living like this. It's Millie Moo! <laughs> it's Millie Moo! Are you scared of the camera? Hello. And this right here is why we clean the metal panels behind the wood because you don't know what's hiding behind it. Lovely. Ugh. Trip number 50 to B&Q. We just needed to pick up oh, bit <laughs> wicks. <laughs> um, we just needed to pick up some paintbrushes, and then Josh has got a large sheet of um, plywood that we're going to put on the roof for when we do the uh, maxi air fan installation, just so we don't dent the roof or anything, and try and keep it protected. Everywhere we look, we see BF Goodriches. It's a sign that we need them for hours. So you'll notice behind me now that we have no bulkhead, so it's completely open. And then Josh also installed the window deflectors yesterday. Hello. What? What are you doing? <laughs> Say something. Hello. <laughs> So guys, here's the van in its current state. So last night we washed down all of the metal as good as we could, just got it nice and clean, ready to work on. And today's job, hopefully, as long as the weather holds up, is to fit the back windows. So next time I show you the van, hopefully we'll have a window here and we'll have one here. It's July and I'm wearing earmuffs, which I know looks ridiculous, but Josh is currently using the angle grinder to cut the bits of metal for the windows. And it is so loud, like ridiculously loud, deafening. <laughs> All 
I'll just show you what I'm doing now. So I'm just marking lines on the metal uh, that Josh can follow with his angle grinder just to cut it ready for putting the windows in. But I just have to show you what Josh is doing with his ears at the minute. Safety first. <laughs> I told you it was loud. I mean, I look ridiculous with my earmuffs on, but that's something else. Turn around. What? <laughs> so what we're doing at the minute is cutting the ribs out of the van. So we're having a window obviously going here, but these are bonded on. But, ah, got my finger trapped. But we're trying to, gonna do that all the way along before we cut the windows out this time. So yeah, safety first. So for anybody wondering how to get these ribs off after you've cut them when they're sealed, don't do what I did first and use a screwdriver, that which will dim the outside. Luckily we've got a window going in here so it's not too bad. Get yourself a trusty bread knife. Knife, got a bit of a lift then, knife. And then literally just cut the silicon away. Yeah, it's a little bit tough but it will pry off yeah. and open up. This bread knife's been through about we did panelling, we did the last van build with this. It's seen us through a lot of DIY, DIY jobs that bread and knife. And it's never cut bread. <laughs> that's true actually, it's not. But it remains in the kitchen drawer. So yeah, so that's how you remove your rib panels easily. Just like that. Oh, it's hard work this. Make me sweat. Does work. Every carpenter should have a uh, a bread knife in their toolkit. Carpenter. Car what did I say? Carpenter. Yeah, that's what I'm. Doing. I'm yeah, a carpenter. carpenter. I'm fitting windows. Yeah, I know, but what's a carpenter then? Someone who works with wood. Well, someone that uses tools then, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. Anyone that uses tools is what I'm trying to say. You should have a bread knife in their kit. A craftsman. Cra yeah, Master a craftsman. Master craftsman. So Josh has finished angle grinding off all of the metal ribs from where the windows are going to go and he's just started doing the pilot holes so when he uses the angle grinder to cut the metal out he's got a guide of where he needs to be cutting round. The jigsaw. I uh, you can tell I don't know my tools, yes, with the jigsaw, not the angle grinder. properly invested now once you start drilling holes in your van like this there's no going back you've got to get them windows in regardless so the weather's turned nice for us it's like it knew that we were going to be doing the windows today there we go that's all of the pilot holes in now so all Josh will have to do with his Angle grinder. No. Oh, no, no, not angle grinder. What? <laughs> Jigsaw. Jigsaw, not angle, gr angle grinder. Uh, just follow these holes around it. And it should make it a bit easier for him when he's cutting out the window. You said. So that's the first window all cut out. 
Josh is just going around it now, pulling off the uh, odd bits of metal. And then I think we'll probably have to use the metal file on it as well, just to uh, smooth it down a bit. And then hopefully we can get the, the bond on and then get the window fitted. So I'm just going around the edge of the window with hammer eye just to prevent rusting. Um, but would you believe that it, it started raining, which is just typical. So we're now one window out and it's chucking it down with rain. <laughs> Great British weather. glass in the back ready to go in um, as I said I've just been round all the edges with hammerite just to prevent rusting mm -hmm. and then the what's it called the trim 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 will be applied to this one um, and then the same process that we're doing on this one so Josh going around the edge with the primer bond on the window window in so I've used the uh, Malamine cleaning pad to clean all the um I don't know what they're called now. Obscuration band, I don't know, it's like a ceramic it etches into it. And we've used primer, glass primer to prime the band. We've also put primer onto the body as well, which well, you can use for rust prevention. I always go a little bit closer to the trim because when you bond the trim will stick. So there you go, it's a tip for you. Josh actually used to fit windscreen, so that <laughs> that kind of helps in this situation. He sort of has a clue what he's doing with it. So he's just applying the bond around the edge now. What's your tip, Josh, that you shouldn't break at the top? Never break your connection at the top. And never do more than two windows in a day when you're using a pump gun because your hands will be dead. So we used to use electric guns, which is like a drill piece. And you want to be trying to keep a bead height of about a centimetre all the way through. What I'll show you is how to do a, a connection at the bottom. So you find to break the bead at the bottom. On a windscreen you wouldn't because you get wind noise. But on body glass, you're absolutely fine if it's the rear. And my hands are already cramping up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break the bead off there. And then if you need to do anything with you can just wet your finger, it's quite it's quite malleable so Obviously you don't want to put it in your mouth, but you want to keep your peak high so that won't leak there, it's just a join. But then what you want to do is, if you're joining from the top is go into the actual bead and then start pumping again. So you get a bit of an overlap. So there's never actually a gap in it then, it just continuously flows. But this pump really hurts your arms. The tip for doing that is you probably it might be the pump gun but you can warm it up slightly. But you when you say slightly how? You can probably stick it you in your foot well for probably 10 minutes if you then run your ignition. So you don't want to like run it under hot no. water or anything? No, it's a bit like gravy. Last time we were fitting windows was on the obviously on the transporter Um and I, th I think it was February, wasn't it? It was really cold. Yeah. And yeah, Josh really struggled with. Um, it wasn't do struggling. Doing the, the last one in particular. It's the wasn't pumping. It? You don't want. It. We did four windows in one day. You really don't want to be pumping four windows out. So when you last bit, all you do is just beat it, and then just do a little bit of a bounce, and then just break it off like that. There you go. And then you just want to give your trim a whack. Make sure your trim's all the way in. And just 
have a look to see. Doesn't look to be any gaps. Another tip for you. Always test your suckers. Yeah, good tip. <laughs> Can you imagine if you picked it up and uh, it dropped? Start at the top. So where did we get these suckers from? Was it Amazon? Amazon. So you want to go all the way in at the top, push it in. You don't want to make sure you're not sitting on the body, not too far over. Yeah, put your tape on. Align it about a bit, not push it too hard, and then I think that's good. It's looking good, that is already, just that one. One thing you've got to probably not try and do is don't push it too close to the body because what happens when you're driving, you want to leave a, I don't know if you want to come in close and have a look, you just want to leave enough gap so it's not touching the body. Yeah. Because what will happen is it will hit that. And then, good tip for you as well with these sprinters is just make sure that you're. Crafter. Yeah, same thing, crafter. same thing, yeah. Just make sure your badge fits. Which it does. And we're good. And from that, so you want to leave that probably an hour to dry. Where's that tape on? And how long do you have to wait? Is that to, until you can drive it again? An hour? So you can drive it with an hour, but just don't drive with your windows open. Because if your windows are open, it'll blow the air to the back of the van. There you go. <laughs> blow the windows out. This information was brought to you by Gavin from Autoglass. Not Gavin, Josh. If you've ever seen the Autoglass advert though, you'll know what I'm on about. Okay. Job done. We have a window. It's looking good, Josh. Well done. Oh, and always use masking tape. Don't ever use sellotape. No. We learned that the hard way, didn't we? And it looks like we just got it in in time because it started raining. Yeah. There we have it. We've got both back windows in. And if I do say so myself, I think they're looking amazing. I think you've done a really good job, Josh. What's up? Really pleased with them. There is a bit of a defect in one of the glasses though. It's bent slightly, isn't it? Warped. Yeah, they're looking spot on. We were debating whether having uh, back windows, weren't we? And it, it's me that actually pushed to have them because I think if we didn't, we'd regret it because the amount of light that it will let through into the van I think it'll be really nice, so I think it's important to let in as much light as you can. Yeah, couldn't be happier, look really good. Very, very nice.